This is The Scoop for Monday. Good morning. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. As Florida gained national attention for its sweeping legislation on K-12 education, WMNF's Chris Young reports that Tampa Bay superintendents spoke out on how they are tackling issues, including Florida's controversial voucher program in their respective counties. Pasco County Superintendent Kurt Browning defended public education at the forum. I mean, we get accused of indoctrinating kids. Let me just pose another question to you. If we were so good at indoctrinating kids, why would we not indoctrinate them to read and write and do mathematics? Members of the political forum Tampa Tiger Bay Club in Ybor asked superintendents of Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Pasco counties about issues ranging from book bans to community outreach efforts. One key topic was the Florida voucher expansion signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis in March that made private school vouchers of about $8,000 available to every student regardless of income. Pinellas County Superintendent Kevin Hendrick thought there could be better uses for the money. You think about the millions and millions of dollars that are going in these FES scholarships, we would all support further investment in education. Um, But I would suggest that that should be an early learning. If you really want to solve the world of public education. Browning questioned the initiative. My problem with with the scholarship program is that you're using public money to pay for a private education. So when does a private school become public? The superintendents also discussed the effects of the pandemic on student performance. Hillsborough County Superintendent Van Ayers mentioned attendance as a problem plaguing his county. Our attendance numbers have gone in the tank and we're at something we're really looking to improve upon because our teachers can't do their job if our students aren't sitting in that seat. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young in Tampa. Under a new Florida law, Teachers unions that do not collect dues from at least 60% of their members risk decertification. WMNS Daniel Pryor reports. Clinton McCracken walks me through the hallways of the Orange County Classroom Teachers Association, where big glass display cases are full of yellowed newspaper clippings and old photos. McCracken, who's the president of Orange County CTA, says his union is lucky. Under SB 256, which went into effect July 1st, if teachers unions don't get dues from at least 60% of their members, they risk decertification. For the first time ever, those dues cannot be automatically deducted from a person's paycheck and each member must fill out a card expressing their consent. The Florida Department of Education did not respond to a request for comment for this story. In Orlando, I'm Danielle Pryor. With heavy Thanksgiving travel expected, many Floridians could find regular unleaded gas prices at or below $3 a gallon. The AAA Auto Club said the average price of a gallon of regular unleaded today in Florida was $3.04, down 14 cents from a week earlier and 43 cents from a year earlier. AAA cited lower gas demand and a decline in oil prices from $93 a barrel late September to $72 a barrel late last week for pushing pump prices down. And an estimated 3 million Floridians will travel mostly by car or truck more than 50 miles between Wednesday and Sunday. Congress has passed a continuing resolution that puts off a potential government shutdown until early next year. But the threat still looms. And one program that could be impacted is SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as food stamps. Another is WIC, the program for women, infants, and children. Feeding Florida CEO Robin Safely says food banks are paying close attention. As a network, we aren't vocal about it because we also don't want to create fear where there's no fear. But internally, amongst ourselves we're preparing should something like that happen you know because depending on when it happens you know, usually they'll front end load the snap recipients card so it takes about a month for a shutdown to affect some of those entitlement programs should a shutdown occur safely says having a month's lead time on the snap cards could be enough for congress to resolve its differences And for the weather, it's nice and fair in the Tampa Bay area at about 69 degrees this morning. Highs today in the mid-80s, overnight lows in the upper 60s. Tomorrow will be warm and partly cloudy with highs in the mid-80s. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines on 88.5 FM and the WMNF app. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.